Good day, welcome to this channel. If this is your first time on this channel, click on the red subscription button so that when we drop subsequent videos, you will get notified. So in today's class, as you can see on the board, we'll be treating a very interesting topic in taxation, which is personal income tax. So personal income tax, what is personal income tax? It's just tax on individual's income. Yes, you and I. The tax government apply on our income is called personal income tax. So this is the introductory class of EIT. I'll just be introducing some you know, necessary things we need to know. Then in our next class, we'll take some questions and we we'll solve together. So when we say personal income tax is a tax on individual's income, what do we mean? That means that the income you earn, government will apply tax on it. That's all. So proceeding with that, there are two types of income an individual can earn. Let me start from there. So we have the end income, the end income, and we have the unearned income. So these are the two classes of income that an individual can earn or that we classify income to be. So the first is earned income, the second is unearned income. Both the two are tax are taxable, yes. Government are tax, apply tax on the two. So what do you mean by um, end income? End income are income as a result of your employment, yes. Where you work, let's say for example, you secure um, a, a job in a very big company or organization, that is end income. And all these kind of income, they are taxable. They are income as a result of your employment, physical work. Yes, you classify all the income you earn through them, end income. On end income, are income on the other hand that does not involve physical work. Yes, income from smart work. And what do I mean by income from smart work? Income from investment, income from buying shares, income from, you know, all this kind of income whereby you did not physically work for them, but it is a smart work. You you invest the money. In the, those sorts of income are classified as unearned income. So when dealing with PIT, the first thing we need to do is to get our end income, get our own end income, then we add them together. So an example of end income, I should go by what I have here. So we have salaries. We have benefits in kind. Yes, I'm, I'm going to come back there. Benefits in kind. We have salary, benefits in kind. An example of on end income, we have dividends. Yes, we have investment and so on. So these are examples of two, these two classes of income we said, we mentioned rather. So there's a need for us to consider what we mean by benefits in kind. What's benefits in kind? Yes, benefits in kind is part of end income. And what, what do you mean by benefits in kind? Benefits in kind are the extra benefits you enjoy as a result of your employment. Yeah, what do I mean by extra benefits? Consider the fact that you get a job and you are being offered a company car, you are being given a house and all of this, you are being given bodyguards. So all these things are benefits you enjoy as a result of your employment. And we call them benefits in kind. So because they are as a result of your employment, it is classified under end income. Don't forget what I say on end income is income as a result of your employment. So that's what we mean by what? Benefits in kind. And dealing with benefits in kind, they are also part of your income. Let me explain in details. How do we treat benefits in kind in taxation? We treat them in the sense that if your boss or whatever your employment uh, agreement might be, you have been given bodyguards, let's say, that cost 300,000 Naira every month, or 300,000 Naira yearly, let's say. Now, this 300,000 will be added to your taxable income. If your taxable income is 700,000, let's say, so your income in a year is 700,000, but in that year, you enjoy a benefit from your company that was 300,000 Naira bodyguards or you know anything that, that might be that might be of benefit from your place of work so you enjoy such benefits they need to be added to this seven hundred thousand then they will now apply tax on it so benefits in kind are also taxable but in terms of benefits in kinds that has to do with fixed assets yes fixed assets like cars houses and so on if you have been given cars houses you know 
the cost of cars are like you can maybe cars of 70 million or something like that so we do not have because if you look at it even your taxable income is seven hundred thousand, but the car you have been given by your in your place of work is 70 million era so in this kind of situation we don't add the total amount of this car to our end or to our taxable income what do we do we really take five percent of this and we apply it we had it so in terms of fixed assets if it is fixed assets only five percent of the fixed assets will be taxable so in this place now i'll just say five percent five percent of seven million era, 70 million era like so yes i think that should be 35 um 350 000 or so so it is that five percent of it that will be added to this to this seven hundred thousand. then they will not apply tax on it so that is how we treat benefit in kind benefit in kind that are not fixed assets the full amount is taxable but if it is fixed asset just five percent of it is taxable so having examined the two classes of income we have under taxation there is need for us to tax to look at the tax exempt items in taxation and what do you mean by tax exempt tax exempt are simply items that we don't tax so anytime we come across them we don't tax them and let me show you let me quickly show you what i mean by that let's say for example you have you want to complete the personal income tax of you watching this video what do i have to do i have to first lead your list your end income so your end income let's say your we have salary salary we have you know benefits in kind benefits in kind so your salary is this the benefits in kind is this so that's the first step then your own end income let's say we have dividend we have dividend we have investment and so on the total will be here now after stating the end income you state the on end income this is the total the next thing you need to do is to subtract the non-taxable items these items whenever you come across them we don't tax them yes i have them here the first one is national housing fund contribution national housing fund contribution so the second is national health insurance scheme national health insurance scheme the next one is life assurance life assurance and national pension scheme national pension scheme and lastly we have what we call gratuity gratuity there are actually five not actually four so anytime you come across any of these they are not taxable you can read more on them but this um national pension scheme is the money contributed by both employers and employee towards the retirement of the employee yes just read more about them these four five things rather you don't tax them so what do you do the moment you get to this stage you subtract them because they are non-taxable items what is an exception and that's what we are going to look at and what's the exception is this gratuity i'm going to lay emphasis on it a little so please don't forget in your text you can read national housing fund contribution national health insurance scheme all this insurance insurance you are insuring your health insuring your life contributing towards your retirement and all of this they are not taxable so this gratuity what is gratuity gratuity i said i will lay emphasis on it gratuity is the total money paid to an employee in the course of retirement let's say you have been working for an organization for the past 30 years and you need to retire so the organization most likely government government business owned by uh, sorry government owned business is what i'm talking about here so after you want to retire government will give you a lump sum amount of let's say 50 million era 30 million era that is gratuity so they will give you probably to go and establish your business start your business they'll give you that money that money is what we call gratuity 
Now, this gratuity is an end income. Why is it an end income? Because I told you guys, I said it earlier, that end income are income from your place of work. Income as a result of your employment. So gratuity is an end income. So when computing your end income and you came across, you come across gratuity, you need to first add it as your end income. Then you come back here to subtract it again. So when we take question, I will take question that has something like that so you understand it better. So if you have gratuity of 5 million, enter it in your end income, 5 million, then come back again to subtract it. So that is how we treat gratuity. So it's something I need to lay in fast because most times students don't know that you have to add it before you come and subtract it. They just bring it here and subtract it. So you get it all wrong there. So you need to add it, then come back to subtract it. The next thing we need to talk about is the Consolidated Relief Allowance, CRA. The Consolidated Relief Allowance. Allowance. Now, what do we mean by the Consolidated Relief Allowance or what is relief itself? As from the way the, the name implies, relief means to ease burden. Yeah, when I ease your burden, I call it relief. So, government also is individuals burden by giving them relief and what is that relief the relief is higher i will explain of two hundred thousand or one percent of gross income one percent of gross income plus twenty percent of gross income Now, let me explain what this relief, or what do you mean by this relief, and what I wrote on the board. Now, this consolidated relief allowance, you know, don't forget I told you when I was drawing the format the other time, I said the first thing you list is your end income, end income, then you add it to your own end income, on end income, then you subtract your non-taxable items subtract non-taxable items so let's say we have a national pension scheme you have it subtracted now you see this amount that you have after your end income on end income then your non-taxable items you know i've explained earlier so i'm only picking national pension scheme just the only one so after you subtract the, this this amount that you have is your taxable income the income that it is meant to be taxed. So when you get to this stage, that is when you now give them relief. And what is relief? Higher of 200,000 or 1% of gross income. This is the gross income because tax has not been applied on it. So you calculate 1% of this, 1% of, of XX, 1% of 200,000, which is the gross income. When you calculate the 1% of gross income, if it is higher than 200,000, you will use it. That means that if 1% of this XX gross income is 250,000, definitely I will come here and subtract 250,000 from this my taxable gross income. That's the relief that I've been given. Because if I apply tax on this, it will result in a higher tax that is to be paid but if i give the relief and i apply tax on whatever i have left it will reduce the tax burden so the how to give a consolidated relief allowance is that i have of 200,000 or one percent of gross income but if one percent of gross income is like 190,000 then you use 200,000 you give the person relief of 200,000 after you give the person of relief of 200,000 then you now give them an additional relief of 20% of their gross income. This is their gross income, don't forget. So 20% of XX, let's say it's 300,000. So this 250,000 plus 300,000 will be the relief I'll be granting this person. So higher of 200,000 or 1% of gross income, calculate the 1% of gross income, if it is higher than 200,000, use 
the amount that is higher than 200,000. But if it is lesser, use 200,000. Then you now add it to your 20% of this same gross income, and that will be the relief. If you don't understand it better, just have a brief idea. When we take question, you understand it fully. So this is how to compute personal income tax. The first thing is your end income, your own end income, your non-taxable item. Then when you get your non-taxable item, you get your gross in, uh, tax um, gross income. Then from your gross income, you give consolidated relief allowance and you apply tax. Of course, tax rates. We are going to be explaining that in our last in our next class, rather. You don't know that the tax rate is progressive in nature. Yes, and nobody in no exam will tell you to cram the tax rate. You'll be given the tax rate. Most professional exams I know that are written, you'll be given the tax rate. So I think that is all for the first aspect of this topic. In our next video class, we take a question, we examine it together, we look at it together. See you there. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that when we drop more videos, you get notified. Thank you. I am in Matthew, your tutor.